What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. In today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the white linen cocktail. Uh, this is a cocktail that was created by a Sacramento bartender named Rene Dominguez in the early 2000s. And the Shady Lady, from what I read, is one of those ground zero type bars where everybody that's anybody in the bar industry in Sacramento or around Sacramento has either moonlighted at the bar, went through their bar program, you know, getting trained there, did R&D shifts there, or like had something to do uh, with the Shady Ladies, so it's a very important bar in Sacramento. This cocktail got so popular in its time that around 2017, they turned it into a ready-to-drink cocktail. Today, I thought that we would do it for two reasons. One, because a couple of weeks ago, I got a comment, I think on Instagram DMs, or it might have been on YouTube, um, asking me if I would do the white linen cocktail. Uh, and then when I started looking into it, I realized that it would be really instructive for another reason. But I think that we should get into making the drink first, then we'll talk a little bit about why I think it's instructive. Today's episode is sponsored by ourselves. If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times, one of the most important things about cocktails is their presentation. And your garnish game can really make or break that presentation. So Marius and I decided that we wanted to start making some dehydrated fruit to garnish cocktails. Not only are they beautiful to look at, they're pretty long lasting, and they're functional garnishes. In that they have aroma that you can add to your cocktail without unbalancing the cocktail, but just adding a little je ne sais quoi to it. So obviously we're doing limes, we're doing lemons, we're doing oranges, we're doing blood oranges, and we're doing dragon fruit. All of our citrus are organic, they're sourced locally, and this is a really good way to help the channel. The garnishes are made in small batches, they're essentially made to order, and although we're starting with, you know, the usual suspects, the really simple lemon, lime, orange, blood orange, we hope to expand into some less common, harder to get fruits, and then on top of that, we'll have some seasonal offerings for you guys. So if you guys have any suggestions for things you'd like to see, definitely let us know. So head to the shop and no coupon code needed because they're amazingly priced and it helps the channel. So it, first thing we're gonna do is grab a tin. Wow, because that's what I like to do first is grab tins. Uh, and we are gonna cut a lemon and make some lemon juice. And we are going to add one ounce of lemon juice into our tin. Next, we're gonna take three cucumber slices, half an ounce of simple syrup. We're gonna give this cucumber a muddle, expressing all of its cucumbery goodness into the cocktail. Then we're gonna add in half an ounce of St. Germain elderflower liqueur. And the original uses Hendrix, so we're gonna be using that today. Uh, but you can swap it out for any really cucumber forward gin like uh, Mulholland if you're here in California or in New York, you can use Mulholland. But uh, what else is another one? Martin Miller is a really good one as well. Uh, that has a lot of cucumber in its flavor profile. You wanna just make sure to amplify the cucumberiness. And we're gonna do an ounce and a half of our cucumber forward gin here. We wanna make sure that we use chilled glassware, of course. And uh, I'm gonna show you a little technique here because this is something that a lot of bartenders get wrong. Uh, when you are adding effervescent sodas, such as soda water, tonic water, ginger beer, into cocktails, uh, you don't want to do what people would normally do, which is add ice to this, shake it, throw it in the cocktail, put ice in there, and then top it up with soda, because uh, this definitely has more sugar than this. So this is denser than this, and if you strain this in first and then throw this on ice, it is going to layer on top, and the effervescence is not going to be in the cocktail, it's going to be on top just layered right on top of the cocktail. You're gonna have to mix it. If you mix it, you could, you know, I don't know, help the help the effervescence uh, release its gases and then you'll have a flat cocktail. You wanna make sure you get a little bit of that sparkliness inside the cocktail. So what I like to do here is just grab my soda and then I pour it directly in the glass, uh, just about an ounce and a half to two ounces. And then we're just gonna finish our cocktail here. So we're gonna throw some ice into a tin. Obviously make sure to use a good amount of ice. You wanna make sure you have headroom inside your tin so that you can aerate the cocktail as well. And we're just gonna give it a slight tap to lock it. And of course we need to double strain to get those little cucumber particles out. We're just straining straight into the soda water. You wanna make sure to have a really good amount of ice in there. You don't want your ice floating around too much. Time to garnish. There we go. And then we're gonna roll these guys up. 
And I want to pick... No. Oh, maybe we'll do the Death's Head one. Let's give it a taste. Good goddamn, that's good. So you've got the lemon balanced out by the simple syrup, and then you've got the elderflower in there. And the floralness of the elderflower is working with the botanicals to create complexity inside this drink. And what's nice about that elderflower is that it's not super sugary, it's kind of tart and sweet. And so you pair that up with a little bit of simple syrup and an ounce of lemon juice and you have a perfectly balanced drink, but then you have a little more complexity than you would. And why I think this cocktail is incredibly instructive is because you take the base cocktail, which is a Tom Collins, and then you tweak it one or two degrees to create something wholly new. So in this case, what we've done is we've taken down the amount of simple syrup to half an ounce from what you would normally have in a Tom Collins at three ounces. And then we've added uh, elderflower liqueur in there, which is both tart and sweet. And so what we're doing is basically making the equivalence of three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup to balance out the lemon. But then what you have is you have floralness, you have the botanicals in the gin, and it really creates a new flavor profile. And so it's just instructive that you can make something one or two degrees separate from the original cocktail and have something so similar and yet so, so different. And I just find that incredibly inspiring. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Marius and I are kind of getting back to the roots of Barfly with just simple kind of, kind of one-off cocktail videos. I hope you guys really liked it. Um, if you like the shirt that I'm wearing, there is a link below. It's brand new in our shop. Our very, very talented uh, friend, Chad Van Borstel designed it for us. So check it out there. And then also we have a bunch of garnishes that we started making. Uh, dehydrated garnishes, you can see them on the back bar over there. Um, you can purchase those as well. We're doing some big bartender packs or just smaller packs of 10. Uh, we've got lemons, limes, oranges, blood oranges, uh, dragon fruit, and uh, newly grapefruit as well. We're really trying to push our shop because honestly, we'd rather uh, you guys support through our store so that we can do less advertising in each video. Uh, and we can really focus on what matters most, and that is making great cocktails. All right, guys, I'll see you on another time.